three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a very exciting edition of Case Live. For the first time ever, we're coming to you live from one of our manufacturing facilities here today in Burlington, Iowa, where every Case backhoe sold in North America uh, is manufactured, and we export to other countries throughout the world as well. I am here with the one and only George McIntyre, a face that you're familiar with, product manager for backhoes here at Case. And making his Case Live debut is Tracy Gatch, uh, project engineer and special project manager here at the Burlington plant in Iowa. Tracy, thank you for joining us. You guys have known each other a little bit, yeah? Yes, uh, that's right, Bill. We've known each other, Tracy and I, for about 15 years. We've worked together on numerous different projects. So I appreciate you uh, taking the time to be here today, Tracy. Yes, thank you, Bill. We'll, we'll take it easy on you. It's going to be OK. Uh, so the normal rules of Case Live apply, even though we're on a live manufacturing floor this morning. Uh, you'll notice a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Please drop your questions into that Q&A box throughout the morning. And here in a few minutes when we're done giving uh, the initial overview, uh, we'll take those questions live uh, here on Case Live. And uh, the first thing I want to jump into with you, George, I think a lot of people talk about the death of the backhoe, and I think it's been over-exaggerated. Uh, I think the backhoe is very much alive and well, especially in some key markets. Where, George, is the backhoe the strongest, and, and where do we still see that high demand for these machines? Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you, Bill. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, skid steer, CTL, and mini s rear overtaking uh, the sales of the backhoe loader, but there is a, still a place for this particular product in the marketplace. So we still see sales into uh, utilities, into municipalities, and also into the building construction segments uh, for this product line. And I think there's also a place for this with owner operators. There's still an owner operator market out there. Uh, this is product line. When I go out to talk to customers, I see them really being energized by their particular backer that they're operating. Uh, there's a lot of versatility that you have in the backo that you, you don't necessarily have with some of those other products we just mentioned. Uh, it is a, a true two-in-one machine. I mean, you have the, the bucket on the front, and then you have the backo at the rear, which allows one operator to really do a lot of different things with it. And as I talk to these customers that are owner-operators, I see their, their faces light up when they talk about their machine. And I think a lot of that has to do with with the usage of a backo versus those other products. So if, you, if you're running a mini excavator, then you jump out and into a, a CTL, then you jump, jump into another product, you don't really get that sense of ownership with operating that same machine day in and day, in, day out and knowing really what that machine can do. Uh, with the backo loader, for those owner operators, they're operating it eight, 10, 12 hours a day they really get a feel for what the machine can do. And you see that pride in their faces as you talk to them. And that's, that's a perfect setup for what we're doing here today. What we're talking about today is ways that you can outfit and set up that backhoe to fit the operation and the work you do. And it's different for everybody. Owner operators particularly have very specific features and bells and whistles that they like to add to their machines and we're going to go through some of those today. Um, one thing that, to start off here with, George, I think not everyone understands when we go from a 580N EP up to the 580 Super Wide Track to the 590, what are the differences between the models that we offer? And uh, how do you break down those differences, George? OK, so, so one of the main differences as you look at the model lineup for a case is simply horsepower. So, the 580 NEP, that's the efficient power machine, uh, and that's 74 horsepower. It's a non-SCR system, so you, don't, you have no need for death fluid in it. And then when you range up to the uh, 590 
and the uh, 580SN wide track, those models are at 110 horsepower. So we range basically from 74 horsepower to 110 horsepower. Other differences include operating weight. So the EP model is at about 16,000 pounds. When you get up all the way to the 590 model, we're at 21,000 pounds. And then other, also other considerations that for customers are lifting capacities for both the loader and the backhoe, as well as big depth on the backhoe. That, that's a great basic explanation of what uh, each of the different models does, George. Uh, and before we get into talking about options or things to add, it's important to know that these machines already have a great group of standard uh, features to them as well. One of those that we hear people talk a lot about is Pro Control. Uh, tell the folks at home what Pro Control is. Yeah, so Pro Control is actually an anti swing uh, system that we have on the backo. And Case was actually the first one to come out with the swing dampening system on the backhoes. And what that allows you to do as an operator is when you're digging into a trench and then you're coming back to get, and you want to get to a precise point over that trench, it, it stops the, the backhoe boom itself from over swinging. So you can hit that precise point in the trench and make a nice clean cut into the trench with the backhoe. And so that's gonna help uh, improve cycle times because you're not over correcting. Uh, it's going to reduce wear and tear on the machine because you're not overcorrecting. So it's a great precision piece to the machine. What about um, uh, another famous element to the case backhoe is the over-center design. What is the benefit to the over-center design, George? Right, Bill. Yeah, if we talk about the over-center design, that's the trademark of the case backhoe for many years. And we kept with it because it's we really believe that it is a true advantage in the marketplace because with that over center design it allows the backo boom and dipper stick to be up against the closer to the cab which redistributes the weight from that boom system more on the front axle of the machine and that gives you a, a more stable ride because the, the more balanced machine uh, center of gravity with that over center design. And then Georgia, another great feature that comes standard on a case backhoe is three years of the telematic subscription. Tell folks why that's important and, and what does a backhoe owner get out of telematics? Yeah, thank you, Bill. Case site watch is standard, as you mentioned, on, on the backhoes. And one of the reasons we do that is we want to make sure that we give all, all the tools to the customers a bit to be able to monitor what the machine's doing. And also, it's a location uh, type system as well. You can locate the, the backhoes if they're for whatever job site they're on. And this product line in particular, uh, because a lot of the backhoes are used in cities, uh, we know that anti-theft has become a really big concern for a lot of the customers and owners out there. So SiteWatch actually enables the customers to see when those machines have been moved and it actually works as an anti-theft device as well. And in terms of fleet management and asset management, you can keep track of hours, you can keep better ahead of regular schedules like that. Exactly. It's a strong tool right. in that sense. Uh, additional standard items, we've got auto engine shutdown, auto idle, auto engine protection. Why have we made those automatic features standard on a case backhoe? Yes, yeah, so, so those particular features you just mentioned, those auto features, is what we're doing across product lines at Case. We're trying to have uniformity across and consistent offerings across the different product lines. And those three features in particular are features that the customers have said that they really want to have on uh, their backhoes and other equipment. All right, George, yeah, so that, that gives us a great setup into what makes a Case backhoe a Case backhoe. But what we're going to talk about now are some of those options, some of those features that really set the case backhoe apart that when you're talking to your local dealer about it or you are uh, uh, in that ordering process are going to give you that little bit of an extra edge, that little bit of extra productivity, and maybe even that little extra bit of comfort. I know that when I'm out in the field, uh, Tracy, I've talked to guys like Rob Manthe. Rob Manthe will talk to you all day about backhoes. One of the things he told me early on is that one of the most important uh, features that we offer is comfort steer. 
Uh, tell the folks at home about Comfort Steer and uh, what that does for the operator. Well, thank you, Bill. Yes, Comfort Steer is a neat little switch that we have in our tractor that allows the operator, while in first or second gear, to reduce the number of turns from lock to lock on the steering wheel by half. That reduces the stresses on the shoulder, but it also increases their productivity. So it's kind of like uh, power steering on steroids with heavy equipment. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Speaking of power, two of, two of the things, George, that uh, we, we hear the most about, uh, power boost and power lift. Tell the folks at home why those are often selected by backhoe owners. Right, yeah, I can do that, Bill. So power boost and power lift are both uh, features with the backhoe end of the machine, uh, and they both provide additional power. Uh, the power boost is actually uh, a switch on the control handle that allows you to have a momentary burst of energy. And why you'd want that is think about frosty conditions with the ground. You might want to have that momentary boost of, of power to be able to break through that, that tougher ground. So that's really where power boost comes into play. Power lift is more for lifting or hoisting uh, different uh, types of materials. So say you have a manhole that you want to, to hoist with the backhoe end of it, you would actually use a rocker switch on the console, click that rocker switch on, and it's going to give you the additional power that you need to actually lift that, that up. So are we seeing now a greater demand for backhoes to be that lifting machine, to be that lifting and craning? Uh, uh, why are we seeing more demand from backhoe owners than that today? Right, I, I think what we're seeing is that customers really want the versatility to be able to do various types of, of operations with their backhoes. And one of those is the lifting of materials into place. So what they can do with a MIDI excavator, for example, they want to be able to do with their backhoe. And, and that's why you see uh, Case giving them the ability to be able to do that with the additional power with features like power lift. So let's, let's have a, a conversation about controls, Tracy. I think uh, more so than any other machine, people are pretty passionate about their controls on a backhoe. And I think there's a misperception that if you're a younger kid, because you played video games growing up, you want the pilot controls, the joysticks, and if you're an old timer, you want the old case controls. I've seen it where it's a younger kid that's been trained by his grandfather. It's kind of all how you learned and so uh, why don't you tell the folks about the control options that we offer and uh, what the advantages of each are. Okay, thanks Bill. Yes, uh, today we offer three different types of control patterns. Of course we have the case controls, we have a two stick control, and we have the pilot controls as you mentioned. As you also mentioned, you get some older guys out there that uh, grew up on a case backhoe prior to the pilot controls where we had the mechanical controls. A lot of those operators are able to feel items that are in the ground through the direct linkage of the hydraulic valve into the control levers that they're running. Then in the late 90s, because we have a younger generation coming in that played the video games, we came up with the pilot controls. So the pilot controls are a combination of hydraulic over hydraulic and electro over hydraulic control patterns that make the effort of the hydraulic system so much easier with precision control. And we, we've done some things in the cab there in terms of the adjustability of the workstation to really make those pilot controls and those joysticks totally comfortable for the operator, haven't so we? So true, so true. We are the only company, we're the only backhoe where you can adjust those pilot controls, not only just fore and aft, but also in and out. So that it will accommodate a wide range of operators out there in the field from, from the little shorter people to the tall, bigger guys, women, whoever's operating. Thanks, Tracy. So that's a good rundown of, of control options. George, tell us a little bit about the transmission options across the different backhoes. Oh, sure. I can do that, Bill. If you look at the transmissions that we offer here at Case, I'm going to start at the, the bigger end of our lineup, which is the 580 SN Y-Track, as well as the 590 SN models. Uh, with those two models, they come standard equipped with what we what is called the uh, power drive H-type transmission, and with that, it gives you a, a direct engagement of the engine and transmission, and that direct drive system gives you more power to be able to travel up inclines, 
with the back though and also gives you better uh, travel speeds as well. And, and it's worth talking about uh, the transmissions. We also have a more basic transmission that's available uh, on the, the smaller models, uh, 580 NEP through to 580 SN, which is a power shuttle synchro mesh transmission, which is more of a manual type transmission. And then I should add in there that on the 580 Super N model, we have the power drive, direct drive system as an option on that model as well. And as we talk about the powertrain, another important piece of that is the axles that we have tied in with that powertrain. So I think I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy to talk a little bit more about what the axles can do. So on our, on our case backhoes, on the smaller models, our smaller models are, are about 82 inches wide. And with that, it makes us a very nimble unit. We have since come out with a, a, uh, a wide track version a few years ago, which gives us a little wider stance. But with that wide track model, you have limited slip differential. That limited slip differential helps power you through muddy, mucky conditions to pull your unit through where one wheel doesn't just spin and the other wheel sits idle like on standard four-wheel drive units. Both wheels will help pull you through that muck. Now on the 590 version, that's a wide unit also for better stability. On the smaller units, we've noticed that some of our customers wanted a taller unit, a little more ground clearance. So we come out with a heavy duty front axle on our smaller 580 NEPs, Ns and SNs, along with an 18 inch front tire to give us that higher stance unit. So whether you're roading, whether you're working on a job site that has varying terrain, whether you're on asphalt or concrete, there's different combinations that are going to be optimal for the type of work you do. So you get there, you're at, you're at where you have to go now. The most important thing, other than the standard bucket on both ends of the machine, is uh, just the attachment versatility that backhoes provide. What are the auxiliary hydraulic options on both the, the rear and the front end of this machine, and, and uh, what do people need to know on that, George? Yeah, oh, sure, I, I can talk about that, Bill. Yeah, if we look at auxiliary hydraulic options, what we've seen over the years is that customers are adopting a lot more of auxiliary hydraulics to be able to run power detachments uh, for their backhoes, whether it's on the front end or on the rear with the backhoe. Uh, so we'll start off ta first talking about the, the rear. Uh, so we offer a single one-way uh, uh, auxiliary hydraulics, which would be used to operate attachments such as compactors or a hydraulic hammer. And then we also offer a, a bi-directional, so a two-way auxiliary hydraulics, which would power uh, attachments such as thumbs or augers uh, as well. So those are the main attachments that we see on, on the back end of the unit. For the front loader, uh, we also, also offer the auxiliary hydraulics. And one of the most popular attachments we see is angle brooms being attached to the backhoe in order to clean up streets, make a nice clean surface uh, with, with the broom. One other thing I wanted to mention is that we, we, off, we offer the backhoe thumb as a factory installed option. And when you couple that thumb with a hammer, for example, it really becomes a powerful tool. And if you look at operators out there when they're breaking, uh, asphalt or concrete on a street, say for a utility repair, they're able to, to break up those materials and not have a different machine to come in to, to clean up after the material. So they can use that thumb coupled with a bucket uh, to actually grab materials, uh, so chunks of asphalt, for example, and dump it into a truck. So that's where the power comes in using the right attachments in the right application. The top attachments on a backhoe, on the on the dipper end, uh, compactors, hammers. Right. On the front end, four in one bucket. George, tell us about the four in one bucket, and uh, it's really kind of something we have a little bit of a, a special spot in our hearts for. Uh, tell folks about the four in one bucket and what that does for people. Yeah, I can I can do that, Bill. So yeah, we have there is a special part, place in our heart for this particular attachment, the four in bucket, and really. It's the one attachment that can really make a difference when it comes to versatility. 
We see that it's very regional, and I would say there's no reason it needs to be regional as far as where we see the sales going into, because this is a fantastic attachment that can be used uh, by a lot of different operators out there. And there's a lot of history with this, this four-in-one bucket attachment with Case. And if, for those of you that have visited our Case Customer Center up in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, you can learn about the history of this particular bucket because it really developed up in that area uh, by a company called Drive, Drive Manufacturing, which eventually became part of Case Corporation. So as we look at that, this particular attachment, there's really four functions it gives you. That's why it's called a four-in-one bucket. The first function is very obvious. It's material handling as a bucket. Uh, sec second function is as a grapple. So it allows you to pick up debris, maybe small logs and move them or pick up different materials. And then third function is it acts as a dozer. So you can actually push dirt with it. And the fourth function is what throws some people off, but it's actually a scraper attachment. So you can use it as a scraper to back drag and scrape the ground with it and kind of grade with it. So those are really the, the four functions and those four functions give the versatility to the four in one bucket. It's really impressive. If you, if you find someone who really knows how to use that scraping function, uh, you'd think that's what that bucket was made for. It's really impressive. Very true. Another little Easter egg, uh, if you go search through the Case Facebook page from World of Concrete, you'll find a video with Nathaniel Waldschmidt where we say that the four-in-one bucket has like 75 different things you can do with it. That's inaccurate, but if you know how to use a four-in-one bucket, you can do a lot of good with it. Another important thing is we're talking about attachments, George, hydraulic quick couplers. Tell folks about the hydraulic quick coupler options on both ends of the machine. All right, yeah, I can do that, Bill. We'll start with the front of the machine since we were just talking about, about that. So if you look at the, the front end, uh, a lot of times you'll see a bucket on there and if, if, it, if you're using the bucket almost all the time, a pin on bucket like, like it's shown here, it's probably just fine. But if you're gonna have any other types of attachments on the front end of the unit, I would really suggest that you move to the hydraulic quick coupler for that. And with that, one of the things that we really didn't mention yet, and I would like to bring up is snow removal. Uh, so a backhoe can be used for snow removal, and we do actually sell quite a few snow pushes on backhoes, uh, but you don't see them utilized on a backhoe quite as much as you'll see on other product lines, whether it's large wheel loaders, compact wheel loaders, or skid steers. But, uh, but I did want to throw that out there, that that this is a machine that uh, can do that. So let's talk a little bit about the, the back end of, of the unit with the, the coupler system. So one of the case exclusives is we do have a hydraulic uh, quick coupler back there. And one of the biggest advantages of that is simply that you don't need to, to leave the cab in order to switch buckets on the machine. And one of the great things about the case uh, hydraulic coupler that we offer from the factory is that you don't lose any of the the machine performance that you would would lose if you put an aftermarket solution on there for a coupler and the reason for that is that we have the design of the pins right inside the, the dipper stick of the unit so you're not actually having anything that is attaching onto that as a coupler system so you you have the physical kinematics that you would of, of the dipper itself, even if it was just a pin-on system, and you don't lose any of the breakout forces with that particular uh, hydraulic coupler. As we talk about with a lot of things right now, purpose-built for the machine, for the application. Correct. I, I think sometimes people don't always think of backhoes with machine control, but there's actually a really pretty basic uh, elemental use of machine control that you can do with the backhoe. Tracy, tell them about that. That's right, Bill. There is a, a very simple indicate only 2D machine control that can be attached to our dipper that will help the operator out to maintain a, a, a specific depth while they're digging a trench. Uh, a lot of places that might use this might be in a utility or just general construction areas. Okay, there's one more thing I'd like to mention about using a precision system on the backhoe. A lot of times we know that 
people are not thinking about using a precision 2D system on the backhoe. But what I would say is a lot of the different features that are available on excavators, you can actually use on a backhoe as well. So try to keep that in mind when you're putting features on a backhoe or you're trying to figure out what you want to do with it. A lot of the features that we have are very consistent what you'd see on a mid-size excavator or a large excavator. So um, I think a lot of people, as it relates to backhoes, they look at a backhoe almost like they do their pickup truck. They want to add some of the uh, some of the personality and the uh, that type of look and feel to it, and uh, that can represent itself from tires to the interior. To what are some of the things? If you look at tires on backhoes, what are some of the questions you get, Tracy? What are some of the special questions you get asked? Uh, what do people need to know about tires? Tires in our unit, today we offer two types of tires from the factory. We have a bias tire that's standard, but we also have a premium Michelin tire that we offer. But we also have some customers out there with special applications, such as they might be up in Canada in the snow and they want a special tire from a, a, a specific tire company. So they'll come to me and ask me about that. Uh, they might be in a different uh, condition where they're always on hard surface and they never get off road and so they want a different type of tire that's more suitable for their hard surface applications. In terms of their creature comforts inside the cab, we do offer two cab interiors. We have a standard cab interior, but we also offer a deluxe interior cab interior. And along with that, a lot of people don't work just during normal daylight time. A lot of them work at night. So we have two different lighting options also. We have a standard lighting package, but we also offer an LED lighting package that increases the visibility tremendously for our backhoes at night. And just like when you're when you're picking out a, a new pickup truck, there's some seat options in there. You can get the uh, the premium cloth seat. You can get a heated air ride seat. And then and then we do have Bluetooth radio, satellite radio. Uh, so it's almost just like you're in your pickup truck. George, what um, I guess before we jump into the the Q and A session here. Uh, bring it home for us. What uh, uh, what do you think are some of the things that people forget about or miss about backhoes? And what are some of those advantages that it could provide someone who maybe isn't looking at a backhoe? Right. Yeah, so when it comes to machine selection, whether you're going to choose a, a compact wheeler, a CTL, or a mini excavator, uh, or a backhoe, uh, we already talked a little bit earlier about the two-in-one versatility of the backhoe. It's very obvious to anyone that looks at the machine, I'm sure. Uh, but really comes down to some different things that a backhoe can do better than a combo uh, CTL with a mini excavator. And one of those things is travel speed. So backhoes generally have a travel speed up in the range of 25 miles per hour. So it's an excellent choice uh, for municipalities, uh, so it's towns or cities that want, want a machine where they can actually ro road it from site to site if they're doing street repairs. Excellent machine for that. So that's really some of the versatility they have for it. But even if you're trailering the unit, it's easy to put in onto a trailer, move from one location to the next location. Anybody that has tried to travel with a mini excavator knows how slow that is. It's like a turtle. So the, ver the versatility of this, a lot of it is, has to do with the speed. Awesome. With that, we're going to transition over to the Q&A portion of things. Get your questions in now. Drop them down in that Q&A box. But before we do that, uh, we have a special treat here. First time that we've ever broadcast live from a manufacturing plant here at Case. We're going to take a few minutes to talk to Braden Manning, the plant manager here at Burlington to tell us a little bit about what makes Burlington tick. Take it away, Braden. My name is Braden Manning. I'm the plant manager. We're located today in Burlington, Iowa at the manufacturing facility where we, we produce the backhoes as well as the rough train forklifts and the dozers for case construction equipment. What makes the Burlington plant special is the fact that we take raw iron, we cut, bend, weld, paint and final assemble backhoes, rough train forklifts, and dozers all underneath one roof. Uh, the team here is extremely competitive and resilient and find ways to produce uh, products for our customers in some of the toughest conditions. 
That's why we refer to this uh, Burlington team as the center of excellence. So my background here with Case, I began my career here uh, eight years ago. I grew up five miles north of the plant, and this is my sixth role for uh, Case, and becoming the plant manager has been invaluable to my experience. Uh, my grandfather actually worked for Case IH for 30 plus years as a mechanic, and as well as my father-in-law owns an excavation business, and so you can say Case Machinery runs deep in my family. What makes the Burlington plant special was that uh, Elton Long manufactured and designed the backhoe 65 years ago here in Burlington. We have a unique site location with design engineering, a prototype shop, a test lab, manufacturing, as well as a 400 acre proving ground just north of the plant, 20 miles, where our, our iron gets tested for the first time. So we are really proud of that and we are focused uh, on our future. And welcome back, everybody. It's uh, time for our favorite part of Case Live, the live Q&A session for the day. Uh, again, uh, great discussion, George and Tracy. And uh, we've got a, a bunch of good questions that have come in, uh, but a couple of things to kick things right off. Uh, again, you, you met Braden Manning, the plant manager there, and uh, uh, we're very proud to be here in the birthplace of the first ever factory integrated backhoe built here in Burlington, Iowa in 1957. So another place in construction industry history uh, the case uh, is a big part of. Uh, a few bits of housekeeping to go over here. Again, the Q&A box is down here at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will be taking your questions here uh, over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. Anything that we don't get to today, we will reach out to you afterwards and uh, uh, clarify or discuss with you at that time. A couple of additional uh, points of housekeeping here real quick, and this will actually answer a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, one, a uh, question came in about any current lease offers. There is a uh, link in here titled, It's How You Use It. That's a campaign that we have running right now. If you are looking for uh, information on current lease, officer, uh, lease offers or uh, uh, different programs being offered by your local case dealer, go to that link, fill out that form, and your local dealer will reach out to you uh, with any information uh, that you may require. A couple of cool things coming up. The first one, the deadline for our annual Kickstart Landscape Business Development Contest is coming up on March 31st. The link there for Kickstart is how you can enter it. And not only will you enter to win Kickstart when you uh, click on that link, that's also how you will register for our first ever virtual landscape business summit, which will be held on April 20th. Uh, that is our case live essentially of next month, the uh, landscape virtual business summit. And you can uh, essentially register for that by clicking that link. Uh, the third one, the next true case live, is actually going to be a super top secret product launch. We can't say anything more than that, but if you click on the link in there that says top secret product launch, uh, you can register for that event, which will be at the end of May, uh, here coming up in a couple of months. And last but not least, if you are in the greater Nashville area, uh, or are planning to travel to Nashville for the World of Asphalt show, we will be there next week. Booth 4044, we'll have the TV620B, we'll have G-Series wheel loaders, we'll have compaction equipment. Come down, see us, I'll be there, a few of us will be there, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the show. So let's jump into some of the questions, guys. So as expected, we didn't get away with it. Someone wants to know, what is the status of Project Zeus, also known as the 580 EV electric backhoe? Of course, I, I was expecting that question to come up. I've had the privilege of working on two of the projects that we have going on right now that, that have generated the most interest out there in the market. Uh, one is uh, Project Minotaur, which is the, the world's first compact dozer loader. The second would be uh, Project Zeus, which the question came in about. Uh, so with Project Zeus, uh, that's our electric backhoe loader. We actually have 
two units with customers up in the northeast part of the country. And with that, we are actually monitoring the performance of those units and gathering feedback. And we're in constant contact with those two customers to allow us to make updates to the units uh, and make design changes that, to help enhance those products. So we're actually moving into the next phase of the electric backhoe loader project. And we expect to have more units available to go out to customers starting in early 2023. Thank you, George. Uh, another question that's come in, uh, do any of your backhoes have diesel particulate filters? I'll take that one, Bill. Uh, none of our units, unlike some of our competitors, have diesel particulate filters. All of ours are DPF free. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, another question that has come in, uh, is the uh, direct drive engaged all the time on the backhoes? I'll take that one too. Uh, as was stated earlier in the program, all of our H-type transmissions have a direct drive. We call it a power drive. That direct drive is activated during third and fourth gear only. It gives us additional power when we do inclines, climbing up hills, to make us go a little bit faster up those hills. It's a, a that's about what I want to say on that. Thanks, Tracy. Um, what are the, the different pad options available on the stabilizers? Okay, I'll take that one too. Uh, currently, the tractors are standard with a flip over pad. There is an optional dirt cleat that the dealers can order. And for those who work in cemetery applications, those uh, cemetery pads are available through the DIA, a DIA kit, a dealer installed kit. Another question come in from the field here. Uh, does the auto uh, shutdown, auto idle functionality expand, uh, go across the entire line or just the 90 horsepower machines and up? Uh, the auto shutdown features are standard across all of our North American tier final units. They're all electronic engines. They all have the auto shutdown feature. What, um, what different bucket ranges do we have uh, between the front end and the, the dipper of the bucket, or the dipper of the backhoe. I'll take that one too. On the uh, backhoe bucket end, de dealers can order between a 12 inch backhoe bucket all the way up to a 36 inch for those uh, applications that require ditching versus trenching. Right, what about the front end, Tracy? On the, on the front end buckets, uh, currently, our standard buckets on an N through SN are 82 inch wide buckets. They can be a standard bucket, they can be a 4 1 bucket as we see on this particular model. When we get to the wide track and the 590, those are wider units, so of course those buckets are a 93 inch wide bucket. Again, as a standard heavy duty bucket or a 4 1 bucket. We talk a lot about roading these machines. Uh, question on ride control. Is the uh, optional ride control, is that automatic and speed selectable or is it manual? Sure, Bill, I can take that one. Uh, so we've actually, with auto ride control, we're looking at commonizing as much as possible across product lines. So whether it's a wheel loader or a skid steer or a CTL or a backhoe, it is auto ride control. We have selectable, pre-selected speeds in there that you can choose to allow that that auto ride control to engage and then disengage when you're going into a pile. And the added benefit to that auto ride control, George, is that with auto ride control and our over center backhoe boom design, that gives us one of the smoothest rides in the industry for our unit. George, we got a, uh, or, or Tracy, we have a question here about, are there any other arm configurations available on the front end of the machine? I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, currently, by arm configurations, I'm talking. I'm assuming they're talking about length, but uh, no, we do not have any other configurations than what we offer today as standard. And similarly, on the backhoe end of it, we haven't talked about extend a hoe because almost everyone gets an extend a hoe, uh, but you either have the extend a hoe option or just a standard boom. Yeah. Uh, we have a. We do offer standard dipper on the smaller models. But on the larger models, we've gone exclusively with the extend a hoe version of the backhoe. Thank you, Tracy. Um, a question came in about that example you gave about 
The uh, factory installed thumb with the hammer uh, or the breaker on the back of it. So if it comes with the factory installed thumb, is there any additional plumbing that needs to be added to include the breaker? Uh, or will it, uh, will it work as is? Yeah, I'll take that one, Bill. So uh, the dealer can work with you to get a diverter valve put on there in order to be able to run a, a second auxiliary at attachment. It's not it's something that's done quite frequently, uh, but from the factory, it does that have the one line running down to it. Randy, I've got your note here about not being able to find the cemetery pad kit. We will reach out to you uh, directly after the show on how to find that. Uh, question here from um, question here from Justin. We talked a little bit about on the front end here. We talked a little bit about uh, um, snow pushes, brooms. What other attachments do you typically see? Uh, on both ends of the machine that we didn't talk about. Uh, what, what other attachments are people using on these backhoes? Hey, I can take this one too, Bill. So basically anything you see that's put on the front of a CTL or a skid steer can end up in the front of the backhoe as well. So we'll see attachments like rakes on the front and, other, and any other attachments that you see on a skid steer, we could usually find a version of that that works on the backhoe as well. Such as an auger. Yeah, on and all, on about all going on the back end for sure, or or on the front end. Yep. Another question here about attachments. Wanting to know if they can use any of their mini excavator attachments on a case backhoe. Is there any kind of interchangeability in attachments between backhoes and other products at all? I don't know. Well. With the mini excavators, depending on the size of the mini excavator, you see with my, a lot of the manufacturers out there, their pin size, the diameters actually change as you get up to the bigger models. So generally speaking, you're probably not gonna find a lot of compatibility between the back end of the back, back O with those attachments, but there are adapters that are available that, that would be, you'd be able to use those attachments when. Thank you, George. Thank you, Tracy. And with that, uh, there's a couple other questions that came in with very specific, uh, very specific answers that are on a case by case basis. We're going to reach out to you folks uh, after the show here. But again, check out the links in the uh, chat box there for upcoming events. If you're in the landscaping business, give the Kickstart contest an enter and then uh, join us for a top secret, super awesome product launch at the end of May that I can't tell you anything else about yet, but uh, we'll follow up with you real soon. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for joining us on Case Live, and we'll see you next time.